scripture this morning is from Mark 13, starting at verse 14, or I'm sorry, 24. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds of great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as, that's, as soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you will know that if that it is near, right at the door. Tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge. Each each with his assigned task and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back. Whether in the evening or in midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Here in the end of the reading of God's holy word. So thank you to everyone who uh, brought an ornament today to put on our tree. And if you forgot, um, don't panic. Um, feel free to bring one in at any time during Advent. Just come on up and put it on the tree, okay? Um, you don't have to, to worry about that at all. Well, here we are again. It is the season of Advent. Can you believe it? We are just short, short uh, four short weeks away from Christmas. And it's hard to believe that another year could have gone by so quickly. Uh, I have always liked the saying that the days are long, but the years are short. I think it's the perfect way to kind of sum up the, the way that time seems to move in your life, right? And I know if you feel the way that I do about this season then it is filled with two very powerful emotions uh, for you. The first, of course, is hope. It's that time of year when we are beginning to look at the birth of Jesus once again. It's that time of year where we should work on renewing our feelings of hope with our yearly reminder of the start of the greatest story that has ever been told. Yes, hope is what I have in this season. That is the first feeling that I have in this season. Now, the second feeling that I have in this Advent season leading up to Christmas is dread. And I know, I know a pastor shouldn't say something like that standing before the church uh, during the season, right? I shouldn't talk about that, but... I've always made a promise to you that I will be as honest as I can from the pulpit. And yes, though this is a great season of hope for me, it is also a season of dread for me. And let me explain, and I think you might be feeling it too, whether you maybe thought about it or not. Um, do you feel kind of like this? Did we get all the gifts in order? Does everyone have the same amount? 
Is it going to be as good as it was last year? Is my family going to be able to gather this year? If they are going to be able to gather this year, is everyone going to get along while we're together? Where are we even going this year? Whose turn is it to host Christmas this year? What do you mean we're going six different places Christmas Day? How are the logistics of that going to work? Oh, yeah, and by the way, regular life is still going on, right? Um, kids still have school. We still have work. The kids still have all their activities that they're doing. And it, does anyone remember where we put the Christmas tree last year? See, maybe you are feeling those things or thinking about those things this time of year as well. Uh, for me, I do have a lot of that, but I, I also have this going on. Uh, what am I going to do for Advent this year? How am I going to preach a new message to people that have heard it so often? What do you mean Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday this year? That's got to be illegal, right? Will anyone want to come to two services in a day? How do I pack enough into the sermon today and not make it go too long? After all, this is the start of the Advent, the hanging of the greens. Oh, and it also happens to be communion today. Is anyone going to still be listening by the time I take the pulpit? See, that is what this season can do to us when we allow ourselves to focus on all the things that come with Christmas. Now, those things that I have to deal with, they, they don't fall into this category. Uh, but for a lot of us, we struggle with the secular holiday of Christmas, right? When we focus on all the worldly things that come with this time of year, we can really work ourselves into a difficult state of mind. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't celebrate Christmas in the way that you choose to do so. I, I believe that you should. Um, but what I am going to try to ask of you this year to do, however, is to focus on the birth of Jesus this season more than worry about that worldly part of Christmas. And I know I'm up against it here by asking you to do that. When you think about it, it's my preaching versus the power of all advertisers in the world. And if I look at it that way, it's certainly a losing battle, right? Um, I've never stood up here and convinced you to buy a new car, but I'm pretty sure advertisers may have once or twice in your life, right? Except the thing is, it's not my preaching versus the advertising in this world and what they're telling you to do. It is the story of hope that is the birth of Jesus versus all the advertisers in the world. And I will tell you that I know that that story and the hope that it brings is much more powerful than anything anyone on Madison Avenue could ever dream up. So this week we have lit the candle of hope. The candle of hope is the first one that we light each year, and I think it's a, just the best place to start the season because that is what this time of year should be all about, the hope that is found in Jesus. And in our scripture for today, you may have found it a bit odd that that was the scripture that we chose for today. And I could understand that if you did. Um, we do find a story of hope, but it is the story of the hope for the return of Jesus. See, just like those people long ago were waiting and hoping for their Savior to come, we are waiting and hoping for him to return. What a powerful sense of hope that should bring up in all of us to remember that he did come here. He died and he was risen, and that he is coming back again. He will not forsake us. See, whenever it feels as if there is nothing left for us to do, whenever we feel in this time of year that uh, we are being brought down to our knees with all the pressure that can build up, the truth is there is always hope. There is always the hope that Jesus will return just as he promised. Now, of all the human emotions that we can feel, I believe hope 
might be the strongest one. Hope can pull us through very difficult times. Bless you. Now, most of you know I am fond of the game of soccer, and in particular, uh, I like to follow the English Premier League, which is the top league in England. Uh, and in England, there is a saying that usually goes along with sports, and it is this. It is the hope that kills you. Meaning that each year you believe and hope your team is going to win, and each year when they don't, you feel so let down and it hurts. See, that way that the way that your hope goes unfulfilled can be painful. And I have to tell you, as a Pirates fan, I can tell you that that is a true feeling. Because each year, yeah, each year, come spring training, I will begin to hope anew that this is the year that they will turn it around and win. And I will believe and believe and believe and then by June, I realize that my hope is going to go unfulfilled again this year, and it hurts a little bit. Now, while that may be the case in sports, that it is the hope that kills you, I don't believe that it's the hope that kills you in this world as a Christian. See, I believe it's the hope that sustains you in this world. It is the hope that picks you up in your time of trouble. It is the hope that keeps you hanging on despite the world that will tell you you should have given up long ago. It is the hope of Jesus that moves us forward. And why is this hope so powerful? Because it is true hope. It is a hope that we know one day will be fulfilled. Now I can hope that the Pirates are going to win the World Series next year, year after year after year, and I'll be honest, at this point, it feels like it's never going to be fulfilled, right? That is a false hope. But a true hope is in Jesus knowing that he will come back again. It will be a fulfilled hope for us. And it might not be today. And it might not be tomorrow. We don't know when, but one day we do know that it will be fulfilled. So when this season or this life begins to tear you down. I want you to take hope in knowing that Jesus came, died, and was risen, and he will come back again. Because the hope we feel right now, thinking about his birth in this season, is just the beginning of the hope that he has for us. My challenge for you this week is this. Focus on the hope that is found in Jesus during this season of Advent. Amen.